Hey everybody, this is Carlo here at Forge Glory Custom Leathercraft. Um, give me a second while I set up everything. I was just doing this uh, little piece here, and um, it's actually a patch. So what I've done is, uh, you know, I took the art that was sent to me, and. Um, I've already uh, cased the leather, so I put some put some water on it, so it'll take the image. And then on the back, I put tape on it, because whenever you do any kind of tooling on leather, the leather tends to expand as you make your indentions and everything. So to keep it flat, I put the the tape on the back side, so that way instead of spreading out, the leather is compressed downward, giving it the uh, the different shapes and whatnot. So, just taking my swivel knife. This is probably the cheapest swivel knife that you can find out there. It has a good blade. I've had it for six years. And you can definitely find some that are like $150, 160 dollars. But um, I think this one was about thirty bucks, and it's lasted me this long. Same blade, same original blade. And as you guys know, I use it every day. I barely take a day off. Usually only take a day off because I, I gotta go to the VA. <laughs> take care of my uh, health problems. But uh, yeah, we're doing here uh, an Aztec style drawing. Aztec Eagle. I saw it and I thought, you know, that's pretty cool. And so this is actually going to be a patch that's going to go over um, over the art on another piece. It's going to go over the art on this piece right, right here, actually. And um, it's going to be taped on and then sewn on. I made that one. I was like, you know what? I don't like it. So I'm going to do something else. Alright, wow, got a lot of people watching. Uh, welcome to the party. Let's see, Matthew, Lester, uh, Todd, Wes, Frank, Kirk, Andy, Tony. Wow, a lot of people. James, Russell, <coughs> Rodney, Lawrence, Alan, Alvin, Aaron, Matthew. Uh, who do I contact about my order I purchased three months ago? I sent a message but I haven't heard. Back from anyone. Uh, send me a private message, and um, as soon as I get off here, doing this video, Matthew uh, Spurgeon, I will uh, make sure to get right back to you. Uh, Jason Race is cool to watch. Awesome. Thank you for watching. Chris Hurst, thanks for watching. And Chuck Cameron, thanks for watching. Um, so yeah, we're gonna. So what you what I do is I wet down the leather, which uh, as I said, you know, allows me to allows the leather to take the image draw it on there for my template and then I cut into the leather using a swivel knife well, a lot of people tuning in thanks for watching everybody this video once it's done it will be uh, posted on my YouTube channel so if anybody can't watch it live you can always watch it later also and if anybody has any uh, questions um, about the art and how I do things, please feel free to ask. After a while, you kind of get used to doing things pretty fast. Remember when I, ooh, I didn't get that knuckle in there right, there we go. When I first started, um... You know, it was really slow going. You know, I wanted to make sure every single line was perfect and correct. And, and I found that... I don't know. You, you Instead of having perfect lines, you, you want a feeling to the art. You want it to feel a certain way. And sometimes, you know, fast and sloppy is the right answer. And sometimes it's not. Sometimes you want... An exact image. <laughs> oh, 
Holy moly. <laughs> There's a lot of people coming in. Wow. Thanks, everybody, for watching. John Johnson, Perry, Deanna, Nancy, Brian, Mike, Chuck, Casey, Glenn, Dale. Welcome to the party, everybody. Today's my, what I call my seventh day. And, um... So I've already worked six days this week. Today is the seventh day of me working. And so when it's my seventh day, I usually do something for myself or I do research and development for other items that I may or may not sell. And it's just, um, you know, it's just one day out of the week where, you know, I'll put in like five hours because I usually work around, um, between 10, uh, you know, a bad day would be about 14 hours, but usually it's about 10 to 12 hours a day. And so on my seventh day, I do stuff for myself or research and de development for you guys. And also today is the perfect day because I ran out of buckles, of all things. Uh, so I can't make any tool bags or any bedrolls. You guys saw all the bedrolls. If, you know, if you're following me, you, you've seen all the bedrolls that I put out. I put out a lot of bedrolls. And that's not all of them. That's just the ones that I took pictures of. Um, so yeah, a lot of buckles got used up in my, you know, everything's backed up in America. So it's taken a while to get my, to get more buckles in. But they've already shipped them and they should, I should have them here uh, Monday or Tuesday. And I'll be able to start throwing out all the other items that have buckles on them. Tomorrow I'll be doing a, a billfold. It's going to look pretty cool. Going to have a wolf on it. I'll probably do a video of that. And then I'm going to do... Um, oh, this notebook for an army buddy of mine. He's uh, in New York uh, now, uh, living, uh, working as a cop, and he, you know cops have those notebooks and so he commissioned me to do one for him uh it's gonna have a an american flag and then his name and his uh, i believe it's his badge number it's some kind of number I'm, I'm pretty sure it's his badge number but don't quote me on that so i'll probably do a video of that too holy moly so many people are chiming in to watch i'm i'm Kind of humbled. <laughs> How many people are there? But thanks for watching, everybody. And as I said earlier, uh, if you're just now tuning in, I will be posting this on YouTube. So if you can't watch right now how I do the art, you can watch it later. Yeah, my motorcycle, it's, um, it has Mayan, Aztec, and Incan art on it. Uh, not authentic art. It's more, uh, uh, it has more skulls <laughs> than what they would have used. And it has more, uh, death and destruction to it than, you know, what they would have used. I mean, that's just my style. Uh, the werewolf is my, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm I'm making it tomorrow. <laughs> the where yeah, he said the werewolf is my wallet. Yep, uh, you're the, and he's the one who asked earlier uh, where his order was. And yep, I'm I'm making that tomorrow. So if I got the time to do a live video, you might be able to watch me make it. Jennifer Lewis, Crash Sings, Gary Joseph, uh, Matthew, will it be live like this? Uh, that's the plan right now. Um, kind of depends on a couple of factors getting my kids to work and <laughs> so it might be late and so doing a live video probably not the best thing to do but uh just depends on a couple factors but 
you know, the plan is uh, sometime in the afternoon, say about three, between three and five, to do the live video if my day goes well. Rebecca and Ricky, uh, welcome to the party. Thanks for thank you for watching. Wow, I'm I'm getting a lot of people watching on here. I'm kind of surprised. Don't think I've ever had this many. <clears throat> Maybe it's the art. This art is pretty awesome. for the eye I don't know what do you guys think I was thinking about doing um, one side like have this in black you know that that piece and this piece in black and everything in black except for the the feathers I was thinking about doing one side in green and one side in red I don't know if you guys have noticed, but that's kind of the theme of the colors on my bike. The leather's all black and brown. And then um, the accent colors that I have on the leather is red and green, some gold. What do you guys think? I think the leather's drying out a little bit, so give it a little spray. There we go. Let's see, are you gonna are you going over a design or is it freehand? No, I have a template that I put over the leather. That question was asked by Rebecca uh, ZBC. Um, I have a template that I put over the leather, and uh, I don't do anything uh, directly freehand on the leather because if I screw up and then I have to throw that whole piece of leather away. <laughs> and that increases everybody's cost and nobody wants to pay more than what they have to so I have the leather or I have the art already on a already on a template and then I put the template over the leather and I draw it on there and then I use the swivel knife to cut the leather and then with those cuts, then I can use this, which is a beveler, to, uh, I'm not sure if you guys can, I'm not sure how well this shows up, the beveled edges that I do, but it gives it texture. It makes the, the art kind of pop out of the leather. Alyssa, hi Carlo. Hey Alyssa, how you doing? How's the life of the artist? Alyssa is one of my cousins. Alyssa Laporte Art. Uh, check her stuff out. Awesome artist. We have very artistic people in my family, I guess. If you've ever heard of... Uh, some of you might have heard of Jonathan Camel's photography. Uh, look him up, too. He's an awesome photographer. Uh, done photography for a lot of famous people but you know even if they weren't famous people his his art style is, is pretty awesome and it's funny because I don't think any of us really interacted to become artists <laughs> it just you know we we grew up and a lot of us just that's just you know Natural passion, I guess. Twenty-five paintings, Alyssa. Wow. 
that would take me forever to finish 25 leather projects. <laughs> it would actually take me... Uh, I don't know. Between 18 to 25 days. Depending on what it was. Or what they all were. You know, and you'll see a lot of artists where they'll put a weight on their leather and they to keep it in the same spot. And uh, I don't. You know, I'm kind of more of a free-form kind of guy. Um, you know, I, I move my leather and my tool at the same time and it just seems to go faster for me than having it stagnant, moving, and then having to switch hands to get the right angle. You know, having it in one hand and moving the leather around seems to just go faster for me but definitely when I started I, uh, I had the leather weighted down so that'd be stagnant and then I move my hand and I do this and I do that um, but I guess now we're just you know it's mainly just confidence um, I know what I can do I know what mess ups Small mess ups, no big mess ups. If I make a big mess up, then I gotta start all over. But I know what small mess ups I can hide, what I can't, uh, what I'm willing to risk, what I'm not. But in the end, it just makes things a lot, a lot faster. <sighs> Nicer. Hope you hear something soon. Uh, it took me, th oh, Alyssa took me three weeks, 12 to 18 hours a day. Yep, I feel your pain. <laughs> I definitely feel your pain. And, you know, I love to ride my motorcycle. And so I, I make sure I take some time to put the tools down and force myself to get out and hang out with my friends. Uh, you know, I found a really good group of friends here uh, where I live in Clarksville that I'm riding with. <laughs> Great group of guys. And of course, you know, I gotta take care, I gotta take care of my wife, make sure she's happy. I gotta take care of my kids and make sure they're fed and smart and responsible people that are growing up to be anyway. Full days of work. And my wife's out of town right now. Um, father's having some health problems so she's up there taking care of him. So I've been left alone with my children. We've been having a good time I think. Haven't been spoiling them too bad. So you'll see a lot of people who, they will case the leather. And what I mean by casing, for those of you who are just joining us, is uh, wetting the leather so that it will accept the art. And there are some people, and this is a very viable way to do it, um, they wet the leather down, completely get it soaked in water, or at least, you know, spray it down so the top part is pretty wet. Then they'll put it in a baggie and put it in the refrigerator and let it set overnight. And so putting it in the refrigerator keeps it from molding, from mold growing on it. And um, so that's why they put it in the refrigerator. Um, but their main goal is to, is to have the leather set in the water in the baggie overnight so that the whole piece of leather is um, has water throughout the whole thing 
which does make tooling easier. But for me and what I'm doing, um, you know, that's just extra time. That's extra cost on you guys for me to buy the baggies. That's extra cost for me to have a refrigerator dedicated to leather. And um, so like this, by the time I'm done tooling the leather, I'll be pretty much ready to, to do the dye. But if the whole leather is saturated, uh, the pores will be full with water. And um, the dye won't be accepted into the leather as deeply and so you get problems there and um you know you get problem where you know the le the dye the leather just won't dive die as a uh, die as well and um so i don't do that because if i put it in the refrigerator and i leave it there for 24 hours well that's a little bit longer than i'm going to have the leather and you know instead of shipping it um and then after I'm done doing all the tooling, and then I have to let it dry again for another 24 hours so that all the water is out of it uh, before I dye it. And so it just, it's an extra step, and I understand why others do it. It does make the tooling a lot easier. And if you're doing that, uh, that Sheridan style, you know, I can see doing that. But I don't do the Sheridan style. I don't... I'm not good at it. I don't like it in the first place, so I've never really tried to do the Sheridan style. That, that old Western style, you guys know what I'm talking about, where it's all flowers and plants and stuff like that. I'm not a fan of it, so I've never studied it. I've never wanted to do it. But that's the type of work to where you're getting all those little, little bitty details, um to where that, you know, that would be needed, but not so much needed in the art that I do. And so it's just a, it's just an extra step. I don't do it. Um, just for time constraints, really. It ensures that the leather is soaked and that it's going to take the art, but I don't have that problem anyway. And also with some of those things, like if it was a big piece of art and I was, you know, wanting to put a whole lot more detail than what I'm doing here, then yes, I would consider doing that because it would take hours upon hours um, to do that much art, to do every single line, to do everything. And so there it would benefit, you know, okay, and I'm going to put that in the, in a plastic bag, I'm going to put it in the fridge, going to soak the leather. You know, I could see it benefiting in that and something like that, but that's not what I do. But if I were to do something like that, I'd, like I said, it takes a lot longer, and so I'd have to charge for the art. Charge another extra hour of labor just for the art. And, you know, I'm willing to do that for anybody who's, uh, you know, willing to pay for it, but... go that extra mile. But generally the stuff that I that I do is uh you know stuff that you'd find on a tattoo type thing. And you know I'm I'm able, I'm able to push that kind of art out pretty quick as you're seeing with this video. Let's see if anybody's asked any questions. I'm going to look over here. Ooh, a lot of people watching. We got Rob, Richard, Gary, Scott, Daniel, John. A lot of people watching. Thanks for watching, guys. Greatly appreciate it. first. 
So besides me, what's everybody doing for the weekend? Now that Sturgis is over and all of you are home, hope you had a, for those who went to Sturgis, I hope you had a good time. Hope you had some safe travels and a lot of good stories to tell when you got back. I'm probably going to go out with some buddies tonight, go hang out. sure does it does it really show up let's see we gotta wait for the video on my ipad to show up to get a little faster here okay there it is does it really show up yeah okay you can tell between the beveled and the straight lined uh, doesn't show up that great on video but in person you can these little bevels they really they really matter and the texture and the and the look Melissa's working on painting and canning peaches tomorrow. Delicious. <laughs> welcome, Jacob. Welcome, welcome, Brian or Byron uh, and David Bassett. Welcome to the party. We're just just sitting here getting some art pushed out as I said uh, earlier this is for a patch I was gonna go over some art on my personal tool bag that I just wanted to replace and uh, you know anybody out there I do sell you know custom patches and so if you want me to you know if you have me make something and then you're like you know what I want different art on this uh, instead of buying a whole new one you can buy a whole new one but if you don't want to, you know, like if you bought a heat shield and then you saw some cool art that you wanted instead, but you don't want to spend all the money on a heat shield, you can always contact me and I can make you a patch that you can then take to a place to have it sewn on, onto the heat shield, or you can send me the heat shield and I'll sew it on for you. You know, that's, that's up to you. But it is on the website. Patches, uh, at least it sh they should be on the website. <laughs> I should probably look into that before I go assuming. I, I thought I did. But anyway, if you want patches, you can always contact me. If they're not on the website, they'll be up there within the next couple days. How does that look everybody what do you think does it look cool good enough for a tool bag yeah i hope so <laughs> not that your opinions matter because it's my tool bag so i'll put on it whatever i want if you like it or not i don't care but on yours i'll make sure it's the art that you like all right so i'm gonna start dying and um You know, the dye that I use is for leather. My skin is a lot like leather. Rebecca, have to go. Love seeing your work. It's amazing. Thank you, Rebecca. Appreciate it. Uh, you know, my skin is like leather, and it absorbs it. And um, especially with the brown leather, people will look at my hands and be like, uh, what'd you do to yourself? <laughs> Looks like I uh, went to the bathroom and wiped my butt with, without toilet paper. So, the black comes off really easily, easily, but the, the brown does not. Hmm. 
So this is going to have a brown background. Gonna have a brown, a brown background. Now I'm gonna make it look dirty. You guys will see what I mean once I get to that point. Hmm. Okay, I'm digging the black. This isn't really very well thought out. I'm just kind of. Um, Throwing this together really quick. Definitely want to have some green and some red. <sighs> Maybe I should do like green, red, green, red, green. Maybe I should do that. Huh. Or should I do one side green and one side red? I don't know. The dye that I'm using is called uh, USMC Black, uh, made by uh, Fabings, which is uh, one of my favorite dye companies to use. Uh, black is a very hard color to dye, and I know what you're thinking. Oh well, uh, my jacket's black, and you know my my chaps are black, and you know black's a very 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 common color for for leather. But um, with your jackets and your chaps and all that stuff, they call what's they do what's called drum dye. So they you know they have drums full of dye and they put the whole hide of leather in the in the drums and then they tumble them. So that way every every part and every piece of the leather is completely dyed all the way through. That's generally how it's done. And, uh, you know, that's a good method if you're, you know, if the whole piece of whatever you're making is going to be black, and that's great. But, as you see here, I can't make the whole thing black. And, um, but when you're doing, you're, when they're doing the drum dye, leaving it in the, leaving the leather in the dye for days helps that leather to really soak in and penetrate, um, Helps the dye soak in and penetrate the leather really, really good. But you don't get that kind of penetration when you're just uh, painting it on. And so I often find myself having to paint um, the dye on multiple times on every piece whenever it's black. I'll do my first coat and then a second coat. You know, and, you know every now and then... The first coat is enough. I don't want to do the feet black on this eagle. Yeah. Now, every now and then, the first coat's enough. Uh, but that's really rare. Usually, I have to put a second coat. Uh, the majority of the time, I have to put a second coat of black on. And then, sometimes, very rarely, I have to put on a third coat. And that kills me, because <laughs> it's so time-consuming doing everything. Let's see. Wow, a lot of people keep people keep chiming in. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, Shannon and Douglas and Rob, Ryan, Tiffany, uh, Stephen, 
James Armstrong, Paul Johnson. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Um, for the full length of this video, I will be posting it up on YouTube. And um, for everybody who wanted to watch the whole thing, everything I've said up until now. And I'm doing this really fast, and it's just because of my experience. I mean, if I <laughs> if I was still in my first year of doing this, I would be going a lot slower. Because the black dye does like to run, but I've learned how to control my strokes, control the brush. And I use um, make really good makeup brushes, very expensive makeup brushes, like this. Like you can you can go to Walmart and you can get a five pack of uh of paint brushes for like what a couple dollars if they're on sale. Uh but this is this little brush alone was uh, I think it was eighteen dollars uh from Ulta and it's like some kind of super magical whatever brush. And my wife buys me the uh the makeup brushes. She'll go into Ulta and she'll buy them and they're just a lot better for leather art than any kind of other brush that I've used because the brush maintains the dye in the bristles where, you know, your cheap brushes that you can buy anywhere, um, as soon as you put the, as soon as you put the brush down, all the dye goes out of the brush directly into the leather. And so that can pull and it can get outside of the, um, outside of the art of where you want it. And that really, really sucks. Let me do all that black there. And so because of the brush that I use and because of, you know, I know how to control the, the dye you know, I can go really fast, but yeah, in my first year, I was going really, really, really slow. Very meticulous, but, you know, once you, once you get better at it, you know what you're doing, you can go fast. Just like with any other job. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, send me your questions. Let me check through here. Uh, Rob, are you drawing with a stylus or fountain pen? Um, so when I do the actual drawing on the leather, I use a stylus, um, which is this, which I, you know, I have the, uh, the template. I tape it on there. I use the stylus to make everything, and then I carve it into the leather with a, uh, with a swivel knife. And so, yeah, I start out with the stylus, you know, I start out with pen and paper or, you know, somebody will send me some art and I'll print it off, um, the right size on a piece of paper and I'll put tape on both sides of the paper and that'll become my, my template. And then I'll put that on top of the, on top of the leather and, and draw it on with a stylus. And then... With some things, I do use a fountain, you know, a fountain pen. Um, let's see. You know, I'll use a regular big pen for some items where the details are really small but important. And, uh, you know, a brush is just too, too floppy to get the right, the details right. So I'll use a fountain pen first just to make sure it's good and right. Good question. Let's see, anybody else has any questions? I'm kind of scrolling through here, looking right and left as I'm doing the art. Hmm, what face do I want this guy to have? I think I want to go with black. 
We'll do mostly black with some brown accents on it. You know, this is a uh, Aztec Eagle. Um, Aztec style eagle. And I'll do his eye in brown. Hmm, maybe I should do some other color. I don't know, I'll think about that. There we go. I think I want this. Yeah, we'll do the center in black. There we go. Now for my red and green. Let's see. Here's my red. Rob, Rob Howe, my buddy Diablo told me to check you out. We're both combat vets too. Awesome. Welcome, Rob. Uh, hope you like what you see. Were you Army, Navy, Marine? What? Were you, who'd you serve with? <laughs> I was in the Army. In the Army for 10 years and... I'm one of those weirdos who loved every minute of it. It was it was very fulfilling more than anything. It was, you know, I'm that that feeling of I'm serving something greater than myself. You know, I'm serving everybody, and and you know, pay kind of sucks, but it wasn't too bad. You know, <laughs> I still uh, had a nice living. Yeah, everybody always wants extra money, but money is limited. We all can't have it all. Hmm. Hmm. Do this one in red. Army one eight. Infantry, uh, Battalion 3rd Brigade, 4th ID. Oh, okay. Infantry. Now, my story with the infantry, I was a cavalry scout, so, you know, don't hold it against me. But uh, I was a cavalry scout, and I remember I was at JRTC at Fort Polk, and I saw a bunch of, you know, I was in my Humvee driving, and I looked off into the wood line, and there was a bunch of infantry guys, walking in the wood line, carrying insane amounts of gear. I got a lot of respect for those guys that day. And I also said, whew, so glad I didn't join the infantry. <laughs> At least in the cavalry. You know, I have a, I had a truck carrying all my stuff, so. <laughs> but yeah, instant, you know, seeing how they just went out there walked for miles you know miles that I drove in my fancy Humvee getting to the to the position you know for the war games and just seeing them fight with all that energy after having walked for so long was just all inspiring so I definitely have a lot of respect for the infantry you know and as they say uh, if you're not infantry your support <laughs> a lot of people hate that but it's true We had a platoon of scouts. They were all my favorite Joes. Uh, we were mechanized, but lots of foot patrols, yep. And then for some reason, they put a uh, an infantry uh, battalion <laughs> command sergeant major in charge of scouts. And he hated that we had vehicles, and he made everybody do. <laughs> when, uh, they went to Iraq, and I actually went to, uh, I moved from, I was down at Fort Polk. 
uh, with them, and uh, I got I got orders to go to the 101st where I deployed with Afghanistan. But all my buddies there in 389 Cav, 10th Mountain, they went to Iraq with this new command sergeant major who hated that he was with the cavalry. And even though they had these fancy trucks with all these capabilities, he made everybody do foot patrols <laughs> instead of going in their trucks everywhere. They were hating life. But hey, they got the job done. But yeah, I love the Army. I love my service. I love my time there. You know, found some of the best people you can imagine. Uh, you know, when you're defending other people's lives and when they're defending yours, you just, a natural brotherhood just kind of crops out of that. And all the parts that you didn't like, well, you just embraced it. <laughs> pretended like you liked it because it wasn't going to change and it wasn't going to go away All right, I think I need a little more dye uh, we had the uh, Bradalax you have the Bradleys I drove one in uh, basic and uh <laughs> at fort knox and i took out a wall so they made me get out of the bradley and do a whole lot of push-ups they were pissed because they couldn't make me build the wall back but the cadre had to build the wall back <laughs> i was like oops sorry guys unless i'm looking forward to getting mine uh when do I? Um, James Walker? I'm not sure uh, off the top of my head. But when I get off here, I will look it up and tell you. <sighs> They're pretty fast and capable. They are. They are. I like the Bradleys. They were fun. Where's my green? <sighs> so this dye that I'm using, the, the red... They're both made by the same brand. They're called Orion Calf uh, LTD. This is their, and what I'm using is the dyeing wax. So they have dyes, they have dyeing wax, and they have dyeing creams. And for my application, I like the dyeing waxes because you can get a really, really good shine to them. Once the product's done and you, you know, take a horsehair brush over it, you know, kind of like polishing your boots, um, you get a really good shine with these dyeing waxes. Is that showing up on gr as green? Kind of looks black on the video. Looks green to me, but I'm looking at the looking at the video and it's looking black. But no, it's green. It's not easy being green. Oh, what do I seal it with? Um, I use um, what's it called? Masters Quick Shine. When I'm done, a um, couple of coats. Put one coat on, let it dry, put another coat on. There, can you see it? Does it does it look green or does it look black? Yeah, there, you can tell. Get it up closer, it looks more green. And that's the nice thing with this, this green, when I, I don't have to be so, when I'm working next to black, uh, I don't have to be so gingerly about it. 
If it gets on the black, it's going to blend in. I can kind of slop it on there a little more liberally. But I don't want it to get on the red because then it will turn black. Ooh, I forgot to do those in black. Okay. My bad. I'll have to get the black back out. Ooh, I scooped up too much, so I gotta make this spread this out. Sometimes I scoop up too much. Because this is a, a wax, not a dye. Um, it's easy to scoop up too much, and it just kind of puddles on the leather. And you don't want that, because when you start buffing it out, It'll spread, and it'll, and plus it makes the, uh, that area look darker, like a really dark green, and I don't want it really dark. Yeah, I'm gonna have to, there we go. Get my trusty towel, try to take as much of that, oh no. Well, one leaf is gonna look black, oh well, there we go. Put way too much of the dying wax in one spot so it turned out looking black. Not what I wanted to do. Oh well, there's just one leaf. And it's going on my own tool bag so I don't have to start over because I didn't screw it up. <laughs> so that's the thing with, uh, with the things that I, that I make for myself. Like usually what's on my bike is the worst pieces that I've ever made because I'm not going to sell those. But I don't want to throw them away either, so they end up on my bike. <laughs> and so people look at my bike and they're like, oh, you do leather work? And I'm like, I swear the other stuff that I make is a lot better than this. <laughs> like my bike gets all the, all the rejects, the first timers. You know, the, the stuff that I made for the first time that I've never made before. That I'm just trying out, see how it works. That's the stuff that goes on my bike. You guys get the second time around the really good stuff. Okay. Where's my red? Where'd I put my red? Red. Did you guys see where I put the red dye? There it is. Okay. It's got three little spots. The thing I'm going to do is eye in red. Make it look kind of evil. I don't know. Yeah, I'd like that. Oh, this the spot here that needs some black. There we go. And what do you guys think? Now I gotta do the background. The background, as I said, is gonna be brown. Gonna my brown dye and brown brushes which I can't find right now there's one so I want a small brush and I want a bigger brush to do the bigger places all right so with the small brush is where I get the small details right in here um, for whatever reason, brown dye cancels out cancels out black. So if something's black and I put brown dye on it, the brown dye will sometimes make the black dye come out of the pores of the leather 
and um, it'll turn it brown, which is the weirdest thing, and you know, one of those science chemical reactions, whatever things. And so I got to be a lot more careful with the brown dye than I am with anything else. But the good thing is, is when I screw something up and I get black on something, when the project's supposed to be brown, I can take that black off um, with the brown dye. So I've only had one person complain about the way I dye things to where I give it those streaks and uh, it makes, a, makes the leather look like wood. And I've only had compliments over it, except for one guy who's like, eh, why is it so streaky? And I'm like, well, that's the patina. That's what makes it look cool. He didn't like that. So I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> but if you look at all my pictures, that's the way the, you know, the brown and the tan dyes are. So uh, I worked out something else, something different for him. But I like that kind of streaked wood look to it. Well, you know, it's not for everybody, and this is custom leather craft, so I do it the way that you want, and not exactly how I want. It's all about you and what you want. So that's one of the things that, <laughs> that frustrated me um, when I really wasn't doing that much leather work. I'd go to other places and I'd be like, well, this is what I want and this is the size it needs to be. And they're like, well, we have, you know, you can order this, you can order that, but you know, you're going to have to change this on your motorcycle and change that on your motorcycle. And I was like, gosh, I just wanted a, you know, $80 little bag, but to put it on my motorcycle, you're telling me that I have to spend another $200 to have my lights replaced and my license plate replaced and I was a little frustrated. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go buy. It's like, if I got to spend $200 on it anyway, I'm just going to go buy $200 worth of leather, make my own saddlebags, and then have some leather left over to make other stuff. So, I did that and sold the rest of the leather that I had. That was a long time ago. In the beginnings of Forged Glory... Ooh, the tape. Okay. You see that there? The tape that I have on the back kind of curled up to the front. So it's not letting the dye go through. Don't want that to happen. anybody have any questions right now is a good time to ask if you have any questions <laughs> yesterday I went through about 200 emails worth of questions <laughs> a lot of people have a lot of where's my order because um, it had been you know two months three months in some cases um, some people were wanting to know where their orders were and a lot of, hey, can you do this? And I'm like, yeah, I can do that. Or, no, I can't do that. Like, that's beyond my skill. and Or that needs a machine, so I can't do it. So it's something that I know I can't do, I won't do. There are some things where I think I can do them. And, uh, like, somebody not too long ago ordered a, an axe uh, case from me. I was like, yeah, I can do that. You know, I just need to know the size of the, case, of the axe and everything. And, uh... That was a mistake. I, you know, I needed the axe in my hand. 
And so I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to go buy an axe and uh, use the measurements from that axe, you know, find it. But it was an old axe and in a size that they don't make anymore, or at least I couldn't find in any local store. And then I went online and they don't sell axes by the size of the head. <laughs> they sell them by the size of the handle, which I thought was weird. And, um, so I never did find an axe of the right size and I had to re do a refund on the money because, uh, it wasn't going to work. I couldn't make it. He couldn't send me the axe and I couldn't make it without it. Okay. So there we go. Almost done. Now I got to take the tape off the back. So when you're taking the tape off the back, you want to make sure that when you take it off, you're not warping the leather. Because you put the tape on so the leather wouldn't warp, but when you take it off, you don't want the tape causing the warping. I'm going to do my old style. Oops, had a little drop there. So as you see, you know, I'm not really worried about a direct line here. You know, I want it to kind of look sloppy and put on there. So I'm not really getting a lot of control with my hand. Just letting it go. Okay, and to make this look a little more dingy, I have my kiwi uh horsehair brush uh that i used you know just the same thing that you would go uh buy to polish your shoe exact same brush and i use this for only black and so the brush loads up with black with black uh what's it called black particles from the dye And so it's hard to tell with the video, but it gives it this dark look when you polish it. It gives it a little darker look. you guys think and off the video I'm gonna be sewing that right here this is where it's gonna go on this tool bag and then I'm gonna re-dye the tool bag to make it darker to match but there you go that's how I make the patches um, I can also make these patches and it's thin enough leather that I use for them that you can actually use them uh, for your vest. On one of my vests, I have all leather patches that look, I think, look pretty cool. You know, they have meaning to me. I made all the patches myself uh, to commemorate things and whatnot. But there you go. Anyway, in the comments, tell me what you think. Tell me how you like it. Remember, here at Forge Glory, we're all about the leather, your design, and my shop coming together to make some awesome looking stuff. Have a great day.